I even just peep my head out of a hole, it's, so fuck, it's terrible out there. Well, it is and isn't. I, it's nuts. It could be a mix. I mean, you got the Trump thing, then you got the All that constant stuff. bombardment of hacker Twitter. What do you guys think? We just hit the live button and we're ranting about... Uh, there's some shit on Twitter sometimes. Some there's bullshit. A there's a lot. Twitter I just avoid it. I just unfollow all those people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go through and unfollow or, or mute some people because it just become... I, I mean, hate, I hate this word. They got good content. The, the, the word of 2019. Toxic. Cancel. Cancel but culture. It, oh, yeah. Well. Twitter has definitely become toxic. I don't. I don't Twitter think it ever awesome. wasn't. <laughs> you had, did you not see the Tay AI? <laughs> Tay figured it out real quick. Yeah. We put a bot on Twitter, and it gets it turns into a raging racist in a few minutes. <laughs> I know the guy that made I mean, that. Poor guy. Like I go back to one of my uh, tweets when I said, um, "What was it? What was it? Was it um, non-American tech Twitter is better than American tech Twitter?" Wow. Oh, there. You're probably right about that. I mean, too many people in uh, they they don't want to talk about how to be governed when it comes to politics. They only really want to talk about what team they're on and rooting for their own team, no matter if that team even betrays them in any ways. But I'm this is my team. I'm embedded in there. I'm a Lions fan to the end. Yeah. <laughs> At least I don't know much about sport ball, but I do know the Lions lose a lot. But some people, man, they they're gonna wear that jersey every game. <laughs> Good old sport ball. And they, they treat politics the same way. Just, ah, eh, whatever. Yeah. Um, but tech, I'm, root, I'm rooting for the blue team. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a purple team guy myself. Yeah. Purple team's good, too. I'm a purple team guy. I'm becoming purple. Yeah. I like purple. Purple is fun. It's challenging. It allows me to be able to be uh, potent. Yeah. How, oh, how do we cast Shodan? Uh, we just have Chromecast, in case anyone's running. All, everything's done with uh, Chromecast behind us. That's yeah, all. I don't have Chrome <laughs> on my uh, my Linux computer, so I don't cast it. I'm sorry. I don't think I do. NHT. Yeah. Do I Something have like that. Chrome? I, I'm, I, try, I really try not to use Google. By the way, and if you don't, uh, go ahead and go on GitHub and type in Chromecast. You'll find a couple libraries. You can completely uh, Chromecast from the command line. There's a handful of ways you can do it. You can uh, you, you can push URLs to it, like from the command line. You can grab a URL, and then you, as long as you know the IP address and you're on the same network as a Chromecast, you can push it so right there. So apparently, just typing in Chrome, Ubuntu software, because it's now the future. Now it was the future for Ubuntu. I remember when it was this way. <laughs> I type in Chrome, and I find something called MK Chromecast. Okay. So this should allow me to be able to cast anything to Google or Sonos devices. Um, and VLC supports it, too. There you go. So you, there's a lot of different ways. And VLC <clears throat> supports pulling in uh, different types and then streaming back out to different media types, such there as Chromecast. Is. So VLC there's a handful. Is, that's how Tavis, that's how, that's what Tavis was poking at. Yes. When he found that exploit with that certain uh TIFF file. No, no, no. What he was playing it was even worse. The guy, it, this is a little insight into Tavis Harmony here. Mm -hmm. He was finding flaws in the way the player, they're essentially MIDI files pulled from uh, pulled from Nintendo ROMs. Because mm -hmm. Nintendo ROMs aren't playing a stream of media. They have, because it's too hard to compress that in those mm -hmm. old Nintendo 8-bit ROMs. So the 8-bit sounds were composed and put into like a MIDI format. So we know Tavis's music choice is MIDI format from SNES ROMs. And that's when he found that they weren't properly filtering that, which the only way you can find is because he was playing the music. So that's what that guy listens to. I, we're going to reverse engineer Tavis Ormond right here. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of VLC, I just want somebody to help me correct my... Uh, my. Uh, I mean, I, this is a major problem everyone's having, but VLC has a memory dump problem where you're just watching a video and then... It'll just stop start running up the RAM, a hundred percent. I'm trying. It's doing VLC something. does. You better be careful with Chromecast. Does Don't it just, put cast, those does it just cast my whole screen? It, what is it doing? It will cast your whole. Is it screen. hacking your Chromecast right now? Well, that could be interesting too. I'm all for it. Oh, it's on cast your whole photo album. Yeah, well, we're about to see though. something exciting back here. By the way, welcome to How, How They Got Hacked, episode 38. This is Tom Lawrence. Xavier D. Johnson. Maurice Nash. Yes. We were late because, well, we were eating hot dogs. and I heard something weird come out today. Oh, yeah. You're playing it on delay. I don't know what you're playing. No output. Uh. Oh, it stopped <laughs> streaming immediately. So we know that it works. Uh, it just didn't work with the browser, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Xavier needs a vacation. He's not as tan, someone said. 
Oh man, yeah. Uh, I we're sun it's deprived. It's, we're sun deprived. We're sun deprived. We're just complaining about that. This man. is uh, this is the plight of the uh, the biracial person. You know, this is what happens when you're more than one race. <laughs> you know, in the summertime you can be chocolate, and in the wintertime you can be vanilla. It's just like best of both worlds. <laughs> I'm just anemic, so you're yeah. just anemic. Yeah, whatever that means. Low blood pressure. I might, oh, I might just get up too fast and faint. Yeah, low iron. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Anyways, we have uh, what what fun things have happened? We got some news stories for you. Let me organize some of them before I switch to my screen. There's a lot. It was a fun day of running around, dealing with some BS, finishing some projects. So you know, as always, we're all running. We all run to the minute late to try to pull all this together. <laughs> oh, the first thing I want to talk about was Plundervolt, the ah. latest. I, and I'll, I'll admit, the things I like the best is the fact that things like Plundervolt, how a little bit of undervolting can cause a lot of problems. And they basically found um, where you lowered the voltage on an Intel processor. And by lowering the voltage until the processor would basically have an unexpected fe- uh, behavior where it wouldn't seg fault to the way of completely shutting down the system, but seg fault in a more predictable way mm-hmm. to get into the secure enclave to get into some information that was in there uh, for loops that you shouldn't be able to get, blah, blah, blah. It's a really cool piece of research. It's an amazing amount of poking done at this, but uh, this is just like many of the other Intel uh, flaws where someone had commented uh, when I was building a firewall, like, oh, how can you use Intel for a firewall? Isn't it secure? No. Uh, Xavier does incident response. How many... So the Intel problem's been around for three years since the very first one. Three or four years ago, we found the first I one. I've never found this thing in the wild. Come on. Yeah. How many in the wild incident responses? <laughs> Xavier's going to tell you zero in his career so far. Zero. And I've responded to incidents at General Electric, uh, uh, my own company, Dynatrace. No one ever does is, this. No. They're doing things like hacking Sally from accounting. That went to that one conference yeah. and got on that bad Wi-Fi and, and logged into 0365 without 2FA. Exactly. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about was right away, everyone assumes that these are so bad, this is going to be the <laughs> next wave of attacks. Um, but it's not. It's a. It's too difficult. And by the way, this one in particular, the only way to exploit this, you need very high-level privileges because mm. guess what you need to do to under Volta Intel processor? You have to be able to get into the registers of that machine mm. and then flip the registers in the BIOS, know the motherboard, know where to poke at it, and then mm. turn down the processor power. And it was an undocumented feature someone found to be able to do this. It's really crazy. A, excellent research. Don't get me wrong. Tip of the hat to the people that do this type of work here. Yes, this is some definitely. hard work they did. It's an interesting attack vector. I like the fact that they're doing it, so it makes it harder in the future to weaponize this. But the level of access you needed to exploit this, ah, it, it just, it, you would do everything else before you did this. This is like the hardest way to get data out. Because once I have root level access to your firewall, do you think, hold on, I know the SSH <laughs> keys, I could just CP and copy them over to somewhere else, but let me see if they're in memory and if I can seg fault the processor, but not enough so it crashes the whole firewall so I can pull your, your SSH key that is just sitting on the file system that I also have access to. <laughs> I just You're just really... That's, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's just not going to be the likelihood of doing it that way. Um, the, not to mention, you're making a lot of noise, you're setting up a bunch of tools and hoping... Uh, that and, and some of the other ones, uh, the ghost and um, what was the other one? I can't remember all their names now, but the whole list of them. One of the problems they have with them, like when you talk about pulling data out of adjacent processes, is how slowly they pull the data out. Mm. It was noticeable. You had to constantly hammer at the processor, one, creating more CPU usage, to try to break the segmentation between processes running and then figure out what that adjacent process was running through difference to pull the data over. But I have to have high level of access again, reasonably high level. I'm going to do something else because now I'm running inside your firewall. There's everything I have potentially uh, to hammer away at to try to get access before I bother with one of the hardest ways to attack it because the the attack is so variant on a lot of different factors. So um, while it is good science, it is good and interesting, it is also not a statistically likely way anyone will attack. So um, as long as you're running, like, for example, the firewall is running PFSense, 
unless Xavier loads some third party unknown application onto the firewall that could potentially have access and then someone could choose to do that, which would be weird, but they're more likely if you're going to load some plugin on it, they're going to load uh, it's hardware. There's, yeah, just going to go and grab the keys right off the drive if that's what their goal is to get into the system. So that's my two cents on it, but I thought I would bring that up. because That is a really good a point. Lot. I don't think that people really think through some of the no. stuff that they just blur out. Because it makes good headlines, and AMD's not stopping it. AMD's mm-hmm. like, shit, processor sales are up, stocks are up. AMD's like, this, run with it, guys. Yeah. Find another flaw. Rise in shit. this, rise in that. Yeah. Man, and it's amazing how many people are committed to rising over it. And it's good for AMD. Um, the other side is it's only because no researchers are doing it because AMD does not own the data center market. AMD does not own the embedded firewall market like Intel does because right. uh, Intel is just the king of the embedded chips. Uh, I feel these flaws are very likely in AMD. But the level of aptitude, the skill sets it takes, and the time. These yeah, the people, years of experience on these processors. Like, yeah. How long do you have to be poking at something before you get enough experience in that domain before you're like, okay, I started doing this on like, you know, Ivy Lake (laughs) or Ivy Bridge or whatever, Mm -hmm. right? In 2012. It's 2019 and I now have a bug. If I play with the voltage, something weird happens. (laughs) If you take the time to actually read the white papers on these, you'll even see where their research started as their paper in college. In like 2014, they started studying processor architecture design, did a thesis on it. I mean, the, the five years of research into there. The Ryzen's only been out with the Epic series, like the new ones. Two years? Two years. Two years. Yeah, 2017. So uh, the processor hasn't been out. I'm positive there's something in there. They do it in a different way. Their speculative architecture, Spectre was the other one. The speculative architecture of Ryzen is fundamentally different than the way Intel does it. That doesn't mean it isn't flawed, but it absolutely does mean that all the research they put in there won't work. They cannot transport because they have a different speculative module and a different way they do parallel processing uh, with the multiple cores. The same rules don't apply, but the concept is still there. So someone has to extrapolate, learn the architecture, and I'm going to quit ranting about it because I can. Yeah, <laughs> we I think I've, I've got the we point. We figure across. we would just let Tom have this one because I have no. Yeah, I haven't gotten deep into this. Uh, that's not really my. I like to read white papers occasionally. I love white papers. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but I haven't. And, and it's not one you probably should read. By the way, I didn't gleam. I'm not any smarter. I can just rant about it. I'm not. It has no real bearing on my job. Unless... Tom. Tom has like four or five people. <laughs> Minimally, <laughs> where you can like right now, my life is crazy. I am four or five people. It's mm. it's intense. I'm at a different spot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll admit, I remember. I remember just a few months ago, and I was working over at Dinah Trace. I felt like I had everything. <laughs> everything was just so easy. You go and start a business because you know it'll be easy. They said uh, you'll make a bunch of money. They said I have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about it, so. Uh, read on the plunder vault they got some video demos um it's it's definitely interesting read now this sounds like a clickbaity title and this has got us on some of the uh political rants how but to it's track not. xavier johnson how to track xavier johnson <laughs> the reason this article is um popular is because it's got the t word in it but <laughs> track <laughs> but no, track no, no, no. yeah yeah if you own a mobile phone it's every move is logged and tracked by dozens of companies no one is beyond its reach, constant digital surveillance, not even the President of the United States. You know, hey, why not? If you're going to make a headline, go for a headline. And by the way, I like this website. Oh, yeah. Um, but what we're doing is they walk through step-by-step step how this was tracked, when it was on the move, how they did each one at the dot travel, the Trump National Golf Club. So every single dot that goes yeah. to Mar-a-Lago immediately becomes uh, of, of interest. What dot is coming to or fro? Mar-a-Lago. Yep. So you start And then building. we just guess, oh, well, this dot has to be Trump because we know Trump was on the... We was seen at right. this place in time, and we saw the dot approximately within this range of this time. Yeah, and this has become a real interesting thing. Uh, we talked about this, and it's it was a news article that was pretty popular several months ago when a series of fitness trackers, because mm-hmm. the military mm-hmm. likes fitness trackers, mm-hmm. yeah. and the military cares a lot about fitness, and they were mm-hmm. able to find several what they referred to as dark sites because they were overlaying them going, huh, 
this is how these dark sites are running because, hey, look, all these military people are all using this uh, Fitbit mm -hmm. and they're all posting it online. It wasn't Fitbit, it was uh, Strata. Strata uh, had an app where you could share online and it drew where you ran and it was all the running circles on military bases and uh, my, yeah, things my, like that. My fitness pal. Yeah, my fitness pal. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the same concept applies. And then what is that? A, this technology is very new. And when you start looking at things like a typical day at the Pentagon and start tracking some of this, uh, fake cell towers are not hard to set up. This <laughs> comes up at DEF CON every year, and every year gets bigger and bigger. So you can start really creating a lot of correlation data on this. And it's this is a really nice deep dive into this and showing how you can build this information. Boy, is that neat. And what mind you, if you just go crop up and start listening, you, you, can, you can get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, so, you don't want to be caught with a fake cell site. I'm going to say you're going <laughs> to... They will triangulate you and they will flashbang your, your baby. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to have a good day. You're not going to have a good day if you're caught <laughs> with one of these. a flashbang land um, in that crib and they blind and death in that baby. It's no joke. It's a serious thing. Yeah. Leave it to these people when they're creating all this correlation uh, data on here. It's a good read. It's a good article. It's something to think about. So how luckily, this works. the way that these people actually got this data wasn't from uh, actually going and set up base stations. Uh, your, your phone is talking to hundreds, mm -hmm. if not thousands by now, of applications and leaking your data to it. And uh, some of these databases are not well secured. Some of these databases actually allow for you to go and make API calls to them for uh, certain MZ numbers or, you know, uh, certain phone numbers. Mm -hmm. um, all types of other identifiers like super cookies, et cetera, help <clears throat> uh, in identifying your location. And then what happens is, is since all of these trackers are tracking you for various reasons, mostly advertising and all this other types of stuff, uh, that data gets leaked and then it gets in the hand of researchers where researchers are all about churning in data and figuring out how to, you know, yeah, do the whole data thing. It's data science. No, it, there's a lot to it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely a real issue for sure. Some, some, you know, uh, I think Xavier said, like, he mentioned turning off his phone and I'm kind of the opposite. If you don't want someone to know you don't take your phone, but you leave it on mm. uh, because that's another data point. Hey, why does this phone just go dark? You know, it never goes dark normally. That's just, you think about all the correlation data you have. It matter of fact, uh, I think one of my favorite books I read was uh, a long time ago, maybe a little bit targeted at young adults, but I made my kids read it and they both loved it, which was uh, Cory Doctorow's uh, Little Brother book. And it talks about government tracking. He talks about in his 2006 book how they'll even start tracking people by their gait, as in how they walk. Mm -hmm. And what the character does, and it's right in the first chapter of the book, he randomly puts a rock in each shoe. Uh, on different days of the week in different shoes. So he ends up forcing himself to walk differently so he can't be identified. There's mm -hmm. all, I mean, the, it's a whole training in OPSEC, and it makes you think a lot deeper about it. So that book really kind of enlightens you. And it's funny because they thought he had inside information. He goes, no, I just played out every doomsday scenario in my head and wrote a book. Like, it, I didn't have any real world knowledge that this shit was going on, but it seemed plausible. <laughs> Hackers keep dumping ring condensials online for the giggles. Yes. Los. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell ring. Yeah. Now, this is only really news. It's not news <laughs> that anything is being dumped online for the lulls. Oh, but the, all of those passwords are being reused, so this is going to go further leveraged into uh, credential stuffing of and course. all that other funness. These are actual passwords from actual humans, and you know humans reuse passwords for everything. That's pretty sad. Oh, they do. It looks like they got their passwords in here, too, and they're stupid. But it's like uh, Think Big One. That's a great password there. And this story aligns right with the story about the um, hacker who hacked the ring cam in the baby's yep. room. First of all, why would you put a ring cam in the baby's room? Right. And then who, so whoever's on the ring was harassing the kids because they got in there. They could see the kids. They could talk to the kids. And that's what's made this news because everyone wants to know how it is. And, of course, some reporter goes, I wonder if this is on the dark web. Holy shit, it's on the dark web. <laughs> like, yeah. none of us are surprised though. by it, but it's at least it is bringing some... Uh, highlight to this and I there was a handful of other uh, more mainstream news sites non-tech ones were just saying never use ring again which I think is a dumb headline because yeah, that's a dumb headline. yeah the problem isn't really ring the problem is reuse of passwords mm -hmm. I mean we know rings probably not the most privacy oriented company owned by Amazon mm -hmm. uh, we know about some of the other issues with it so there are maybe some other if you care about privacy don't connect it to their cloud system because we know other people can see it uh, you can ring has this whole sharing program where it's called the neighborhood watch and you share it with local authorities mm -hmm. and police 
there's not a lot of rules around that, so that's why there's some concern about it. Where you can, what do they call it, the ring neighborhood or something? I can't remember. It's, it's a system. Yeah, something like that. You sign up can, for it. Yeah, you have to sign up. You for have it. to opt in. It's not an implicit opt in. You have to choose to. And what happens is, if someone steals a package, for example, you can then correlate that person's car because maybe they sold off your porch, had their hat down low, but then the other person's ring caught their car mm-hmm. two blocks away parked. Mm-hmm. So they can kind of go, hey, there's the guy holding my package, and they can track him across all the rings, um, which is kind of like the Detroit uh, Greenlight Project. Oh, it ties in with that. They're yeah. going to use Same all concept. those camera angles to mm-hmm. track you. Watch Dogs 3 comes out soon. We yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, Throw some um, money at us for Watch Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> the famous time words. Throw some money at us. <laughs> Throw some money at us. So, uh, nonetheless, it, it's definitely a concern, something to think about. Um, it's no shock that credits are online, but it's all the same thing. It does support two-factor. Uh, you can lock these things down. You can use good passwords, but it, it, people don't. So, it's um, it's not a real surprise. And I'm sure Ring has got 2FA. Oh, yeah, yeah. As far as I'm not 100% sure they do because it ties it's to your Google, Amazon right? account, doesn't it? Or no, no Amazon. Said, Amazon. Yeah. So, it's got to be 2FA. Speaking of Amazon, <laughs> Xavier, did you know this? I'm sure you did. <laughs> Amazon conference badges tracked attendees' movements. No shit. Yeah. Oh. Did you know that your uh, your room key also tracks your room your your movement inside of casinos and bars and mm-hmm. it, like every conference is trying to do this. Well, I would be surprised if the DEF CON badge did not have this same feature. It's just you know, in reality, with where we are. You, you want to have the intelligence on where the people are going, mm-hmm. what they're interested in. This is all data science. So we want to be able to make the conference better. It's not being used for malicious purposes. It, I'm, I'm almost positive it's anonymized based on what me and Chris Callis, shout out to you, Chris, because you played around with this and mm-hmm. I was just there, more or less. And we figured this out uh, two AWS conferences ago. <clears throat> and that's There's... the reason why I hold on to my badges, because they're pretty cool. And they have some pertinent information about you. And actually, when you go booth to booth, that's the only way you can collect your swag. You have to give up your information. And these people contact you after. So they know who you are. You know, it's not even about being anonymized. So uh, expect this. It happens. DNA Spaces, that's what it was called. And I'm bringing this up because uh, outside of even the managing people when – Cisco does something interesting. They have a whole BLE manager because they want to manage your Bluetooth, and then they can see the beacons. Now, the advantage of Bluetooth over Wi-Fi is it's much shorter range. That means you're easier to identify mm-hmm. by your Bluetooth beacons, and uh, there's a whole series of things that Cisco's been working on to get behavior insights and benchmarking, track and monitor assets, as in people. You're an asset, by the way. <laughs> That's how they look at data export, crying your location analytics. Um, there's a lot of companies working on things like this. I remember Cisco made a big deal about it, how you can track. Uh, they had like a demo a while ago I seen where it was all about tracking uh, people in malls, what stores they yeah. visited, because that's where they were trying to market this product to. We got was, a friend who made this out of yeah. Raspberry Pi. I mean, yeah. uh, out of uh, Wi-Fi pineapples. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can learn a lot by Wi-Fi. You can learn almost more from Bluetooth. How long they stood in front of a store was one of those analytics. Mm. Like this person stopped in front of this store for 20 minutes. That's hard to triangulate with Wi-Fi because it's longer. Bluetooth having about a 22-foot range, I know within... This guy could track you for the rest of your life, basically. Yeah. Yeah. No, this guy literally using Wi-Fi could track you for mm. the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's scary. It was real scary. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. great how they <laughs> we do We had to sign NDAs and everything. Mm-hmm. It was... Yeah. But... Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, and this is technology that's just sitting there, but using Wi Fi. Mm-hmm. So I know it can happen with BLE, but like yep. it's the exact same thing that's happening with this 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 Oh badge. yeah, with the badge. They mm-hmm. do. They want it's to track like, and have uh, analytics on for, there. It's forever. It's the it's a data point, place and time. Point in time is really important. I mean, there's people that are in jail right now because point in time. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. You're, I mean, you are at the only person at this point in time we have to convict you. That's enough information. Yeah. Well, they did that, and this kind of goes back to the cell phone thing. Uh, there's a couple different studies that were done. They they set up, they staged it. They wanted you to call in a threat from a payphone. That was the oh, that was the mm. the deal. So they got someone to do it, and the person had to go to a couple locations and call in threat from a payphone through differential data. They did a differential for how many times that a phone. They didn't know the phone number of the person that was part of the deal, mm-hmm. but they could use correlation data to reverse it by saying. 
here's the data points where the person says they were, like we where they did the thing, right. and then here's the person that we made the one known place. They know they call, but we still don't know their cell phone number. What cell phone matches all those correlation mm. points? And there was only two within, and this isn't a city. They were doing this in a city, and they only had two cell phones that matched this. One of those two cell phones is the person, and it was. So it's crazy how detailed you can get by doing Imagine differential data. The, the other guy who wasn't involved in Exactly. Just, he just coincidentally is in three places at the appreh- wrong time. Apprehend you. Like, oh, my God. Whoa. And they've been digging into that. I remember seeing that. that guy, though. He did look shady. Like, <laughs> And this is a real problem because um, it, it, it comes as uh, – Hijacking cell phones right now frequently is done to capture your 2FA, but Easy. why wouldn't you hijack someone's cell phone and spoof their location to... They need a suspect, so when they get the suspect, they quit looking for one. <laughs> That's... They do it in movies all the they time. They do it in movies, it's just, and it's not just a movie scene. This can be a real threat to your personal uh, well-being. So, that got an awful little rant here, but I think it's something uh, to dig into and think about. I thought it was interesting, so... I can't remember, and someone call me that has a better memory than me. Uh, no. Did, did we? Not. I didn't think we covered this. So two malicious Python libraries caught stealing SSH mm. and GBT keys. One library was only available for two days, but the second was live for nearly a year. Ooh, wow. And um, this is a really interesting attack style. This is a supply chain attack here. Mm-hmm. So the Python, Python security team removed the Trojanized Python library, uh, PyPy, Python packages index, uh, that were caught. Stealing SSH and GBT keys from the project's infected developers. The two libraries are created by the same developer and mimicked other more popular libraries. So typo squatting. So because they know people will well typo typo something. And uh, the first is Python three date util, which is uh, imitated by popular date util library. So you forget to put the Python three dash in front of it. And the second was Jellyfish. The first L is an I, mimicked by jellyfish. Ooh, that is, yeah. And this is this is going to be a problem. There was an article that said you could uh, only compromise a handful of Python developers and take down massive amounts of projects that mm-hmm. are based on Python with only like seven developers compromised. Yeah. Because, and this is where uh, I think we need to really think a little bit of the supply chain. We just assume some of the upstream libraries when we're building code yeah, I'm going to pull this library. I'm going to pull the jellyfish library. I'm going to pull the date util library that it's fine. And then if there's an incremental incremental update and then the only errata note is minor fixes. Now they fix something. I don't care. Cool. It compiles. It works. Yeah. The minor fix was it exfiltrates data. Mm. Um, These are kind of scary things. Uh, Developers advise to review projects. I I, I get it that developers are advised to review, but they really need to stop and start digging deeper. We need some type of better tooling to help Mm -hmm. audit for this. I know GitHub, we talked about this uh, last week or two weeks ago. Uh, GitHub has a new tool to look for code flaws and things like that, but maybe this is another thing they need to start digging into. Do any of these make calls out to IP addresses? Of course, they're going to obfuscate that, but there's still ways we can look at it, like compile it, sandbox it, mm-hmm. wait a minute. And like one of the things they pointed out here, it looks like the file tries to exfiltrate SSH and GBT keys from the user's computer and send them to IP address here. So they know where it's sending it from. How many other libraries are trying to send it and exfiltrate it? Because you still have to have an exfiltration mechanism, and digging for that in there is going to be the key to finding out if it was manipulated because it is hard to keep track of all the developers that contribute, and they don't often make code changes when there's not a need for it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there is a really minor fix. Someone submits something upstream. Oh, I had a typo. I'll just fill out minor fixes, you know, and uh, no big deal. So uh, scary, and it's because as we get better at security, um, they're just going to go further up the stream, so got to be careful on that yeah such as life now this one this is the other one we were laughing about so this guy this oh, guy yeah so five years in the clink for that's super it. crook that's it I, that doesn't feel like a lot who scammed facebook out of 120 million with fake tech invoices that's really that's not a long time at all that's not no Next five years behind bars for masquerading a $120 million scam that involved emailing fake IT equipment invoices to Facebook and Google. I, I can't believe it worked is kind of how I feel. Like, But then again, I, you, you, you would target companies like that. Like, they'll, cash, they'll cash that check. They'll send that invoice. They'll pay that bill. He only paid back $50 million, by the way. Yeah. So no, no doubt there's a lot so of money missing. A cool 70 oh, yeah. hidden somewhere. Oh, yeah. 
Look, he had to he had to hand over fifty million held in bank accounts, and uh, faced a three hundred thousand dollars fine. Yeah, that is crazy. So he's he's doing okay. He's doing all right. He's got a couple dollars. There's some Bitcoin. He scrolled it away, and there's uh you know some little mess here, but it, it's kind of interesting because, um, you you know he got away with it once with a small amount. That's how this all starts. It wasn't his plan for $120 million. It's like that guy that can't quit pulling the slot machine and putting all the money in until all the money's gone. I want big ones. Keep putting it in. Keep putting it in. Oh, and then, then the handcuffs come out of the machine. <laughs> He's lucky because he got charged with something that carries a maximum of 20 years. So yeah. to get five, he's doing pretty good. And, and the reality is, let's say he only got away with half a million. How far will Google and Facebook push it going, ah, shit, wipe that under the rug. We don't want people to know we're dumb. We just sent this dude money. Like, you you just, like, slap this guy on the wrist, find a misdemeanor, uh, update our processes. He stole a couple bucks from us. Do we want to go to the lawyers? Do we want our name in there and let people know that we'll pay invoices that are randomly sent to us? Just get this shit out of court. Tell that guy to shut up and pay a couple dollars back. You know, fly under the radar. Million, though, but when he got to 120 million, you're like, look, it's the share. It's it's a note on the shareholders. Somehow processes were robbed of this much. Like shareholders are involved, and like, yeah, you got to prosecute. <laughs> Not that I'm saying you should get away with small crimes, but I'm just saying, <laughs> greed, man. That shit's crazy. It'll take you down every time. Now this is going to be a disaster here in the U.S. and uh, don't worry, it's not. We're not alone. I know Australia has been working on this for a while. Uh, they're really, really upset, and this is the quote right here: "You're going to find a way to do this, or we're going to do it for you," said Senator Lindsey Graham. <laughs> yeah, See. we're not going to live in a world where a bunch of child abusers have a safe haven to practice their craft. Period. End of discussion. Well, and, that's not true. No. Yeah. No. Because like, why? Encryption. Yeah. And every time, every time encryption comes up, and every time they can't get into something, first they're going to they yell, and scream, and, moan. and when and they whine, bitch, and moan, but then they say, but it's for the children. But right. It's, it's always for the children. Like, I'm wondering why this article just took that, that twist. Not. But yeah. it's not. It's always for the fucking drug dealers and for the fucking extremists. Yeah. Which is cool. Like, do your thing, but don't make it about the children. Yeah, it's because we know it's a BS lie. They won't ever give us any statistics mm. to tell us if they really how many cases we can't say that's private. How many cases that were actually prosecuted from doing this that you had visibility and that you will lose potentially, provided that these mm -hmm. people, these awful human beings who are doing awful things, don't get me wrong, oh, yeah, throw the book at those people. Mm -hmm. But tell me that you really are doing it, or you just want to make sure you can read everyone's messages because you care about them. Right. Uh, talk about your real motives here. Is how I feel <laughs> about that. Um, you can't just say we can't lock things up. That's that's just not. You, people have a right to privacy. Um, the there are awful people, and we were catching awful people before they were on Facebook. We can catch awful people post Facebook awful or people, post encryption. Awful people have figured out encryption enough to encrypt your files for you and not give you the key, and then make you pay them for the key. What makes you think that awful people can't figure out encryption that you otherwise cannot break? How about yeah. well, awful people were here before Facebook and Twitter? They're going to be here after. There, there was a police <laughs> right. process. Facebook wasn't here to just make your life easier to catch <laughs> awful people. Right. It's because we already know what happens. You go, hey, I kind of have access to all these messages. Let's go uh, find out if someone's doing something awful. That's how that twist always happens. There's a reason we care about privacy. It's not to protect the awful people. It's because the other people get caught up in it. There's a reason. I mean, sure, if they just fired indiscriminately in a crowd, they might kill some awful people. But they're going to kill a lot of people, too. There's a reason we don't have them doing that. There's awful people <laughs> operating in plain sight saying shit like cheese pizza and meaning something else. Yeah. Comet pizza. You get what I'm saying? Like, this mm -hmm. shit is operating in real, like, it's here. Let's not act like encryption it starts or begins with some digital cert. Right. It, it like so much shit is encrypted in before and our eyes. I, I don't know this to be absolutely true, but I'm gonna probably guess because these people who are perf doing these type of bad things, I don't think they're on Facebook as much. Like they probably know better than to. I'm not saying there's not some dumb criminal out there, but I'm gonna say the majority of them, the treasure trove of them, right. are somewhere pseudo anonymous on a dark web somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's probably where you're most likely. That's where the resources should be spent hacking them down and things like that. You want to attack a forum that's only for cheese pizza? Then you should go do that. I feel like <laughs> when it's when it comes to dark web, like uh, you, uh, they kind of own they own all this fucking infrastructure. Like they own the dark web, they own the clear web, they own the they own 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 own. This is yours. Like you have copies of it. Like, 
figure it out, man. Quit, get your dick out of the zipper. Quit, cl- quit complaining to us as the public. Like, quit <laughs> telling us about your bullshit. It's your <laughs> network, bro. Like, mm-hmm. we're downstream. Do whatever you got to do upstream. I don't care. Quit bothering me about it, though. <laughs> we already know you're spying on us. We already know you're tracking us. It doesn't matter if it's encrypted or not. It doesn't matter if you know what the message says. Just the fact that me and him message, you can give us conspiracy and give us the rest of our natural lives in jail regardless. The message might actually reveal that we only did 10 years worth of crime, actually. You get what I'm saying? Like, just the fact, like, you guys have other ways to book us than yeah. to fucking look at the messages. Let's exactly. be real. The fact that this dude messaged a 13 year old, you sh- that's a fucking problem. Like, you go forward with that. Like, you don't even worry about what the message says. Exactly. This was interesting. <clears throat> New Orleans hit by Cybertech declares state of emergency. Yes. So. Poor New Orleans. Uh, yeah. My favorite party state. Party the city. party state. Party so, city. Yeah. Party city. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah. Not party state. city. Get that. Uh, hold on. Has been ransomware. All right. Now you got to switch. Hold on. Not when someone sends me a text, it pulls shows up on the screen. That's why I switched it. Don't oh. get my phone number on screen. <laughs> Docs. I should have been my daughter's, but Docs. yeah. <laughs> So uh, the NOLA Ready Emergency Twitter account for New Orleans, most often associated with hurricane preparedness, posted five message warning of suspicious activity in city networks informing residents that it had been activated by its emergency operations center. And I guess I kind of like that, that the fact that they treat in a hurricane or a cyber attack in a similar manner. It kind of makes <laughs> sense. I mean, both are in some ways when a you cyber talk attack about. is a hurricane. Yeah, I mean. Well, the city said emergency services is 911 and the fire department were still running, but didn't specify any agencies have been shut down, according to Orleans. Uh, a new series of attacks were affecting the city services. Workers at City Hall and Police Department were told to unplug their computers, according to the report. And I actually think that's some good advice. If you don't know, shutting it down in the short term, especially because you know more people are going to click on some phishing emails, et cetera, et cetera, uh, shutting it down makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't know, turn it off. That yeah. is a good way first to start. First thing you do. That's first thing you do, turn it off. Do, turn it off. And, for example, like, if you're being targeted by a bunch of phishing attacks, if you can reverse engineer, and this is the, the defense against it, oh, i seen it, i see this phishing attack, one person clicked on it, but they didn't have high-level privilege to encrypt everything, but we see the we see the attack incoming. Stop, hold the presses, it's going to come in from a bunch of different angles. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the uh, command and control servers, let's uh, build some firewall rules to block them, shut them down, and in the short term, everyone unplug all their shit. <laughs> that mm-hmm. way you can't click on it. Because we know, despite a Twitter emergency account and everything else, there's some dude that's going to turn his computer around and be like, huh, I wonder what <laughs> that does, and click on that shit. And if you ain't got the rules in place, he's going to be the next attack back Click here for tits. Because they want to know what's it, yeah. <laughs> Because it's an enticing email. Matter of fact, the email probably says uh, it's okay to click this email to get the report on cyber. They were, you know, some reverse yeah. psychology is how these uh, social engineering attacks work. Don't so. click here. Don't click here. Oh, cool. I'm clicking that. So <laughs> um, either way, and it's it been. it pops up that box like, I told you not to click this. And you got to click OK. And it's like, you really couldn't click this. You got to click OK. And it's like, you know, I'm not going away. And you click and you got to click and you got to click and you got to click. You got to restart your computer. Yeah, I, it's we're just going to keep seeing more attacks against cities and things like that, but I, I like to see some responses on uh, the cities. That's actually a good thing. Now, i see seen boo, this. Oh, crabs, boo. Yeah. Ransomware gang now outing victims, outing people. I mean, this what do you Krebs, mean? Krebs knows about this topic, exactly, right? Exactly, <laughs> right? Like, Krebs, you're the like expert on outing people. Yeah, you know something about it. O- outing is, I mean, I'm not Dan, but, you know, well, yeah, I heard about this. This is like a new behavior. They're kind of taunting and intimidating other people so they're like if you don't pay us we'll leak your data and so the people are like oh no don't leak my data we'll pay you yeah the information is closed on each no, no, maze no, leak victim my data because i need to get my shit back yeah no kidding i'd rather everybody well, have it and me be able to recover the... they're only gonna leak nah, the part that in... you don't really want yeah everyone to have a copy of your data bro you got fucking people that can't even recover is baltimore even back online yet baltimore would love to have a public copy <laughs> At this point, <laughs> you gotta think, think, bro. I don't know. You Baltimore. I know Baltimore. Maryland. The M and the DMV. The D stands for DC, where all the cyber happens. Think about the it's, microscope. They, they fucking cyber rich there, and they still of, can't figure it think out. About the microscope. Man. I don't. I, I I seen that Abrams said this. Abrams is the guy from uh, Bleeping Computers. Uh, but ransomware attacks are now data breaches. No, they were always data breaches. Right. Uh, 
you, as far as any auditing, as far as any cybersecurity insurance, a ransomware attack, someone manipulated your data, your data huh? you may not be able to Access. easily prove that they exfiltrated they all of accessed. it, but if they accessed it. Now, at that point, yes, it's a data breach. Mm, yeah. uh, they may have only taken small bits. They may have taken large bits because you don't know. They have to take they, everything because that's how encryption works. Well, the, they encrypt the process everything. of yeah. encrypting means that means you they have to had take able, bite, bite. Well, they had to touch it. They could they touch, touch it. it. Yeah, yeah, they had to touch it. There's yeah. no doubt. Period. If and as a forensic, if I'm on forensics, if something touched the data, yes, that there's no the integrity is gone. It's the integrity is gone. gone. There's no more integrity yes. on this data. Nope. So uh, the maze ransomware moves just days after cyber criminals responsible for managing the uh, soda cannabis are evil ransomware. I can say it now. I've seen it enough. <laughs> uh, posts on popular dark web forums <laughs> that they plan to start using stolen files and data to public love restriction to pay ransom. So they're gonna uh, find the goodies in there and say we're gonna dump this because. The reality is, even though you have to go through the breach process, at least you don't have to go through the fact that, oh, by the way, we dumped all your employee payroll online. Uh, we created a database. I mean, but is it even anything new? My, my employee's social security number is already out there. <laughs> Voter <laughs> registration lets me know their, their address. And from their address, I can know if they own their house and then everything else about yeah. them if they own a house. True. Let's be realistic. Dump the data, please, so I can recover. And I get these dentists back online because the data I can't get... Is the fucking special DB backup that I made that I automated for the stupid fucking software? His computer crashed and now he's fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got the computer back, but now I just need the stupid fucking backup file. So yeah, dump all the patients' billing information so I can get that backup file. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you pronounce this uh, ransomware again? Soda Kanibi? Did I say it wrong? Sodi, I said it wrong. <laughs> Sudonokabi. Sudonokabi. Sudo. There we go. Sudonokabi. Just think about it like that. I Sudo still can't no pronounce Kobe. it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably pronouncing the it wrong. Right the project manager Sudo at Look, my new company told me how to pronounce it. Yeah. I still can't do it. Shout out to I, Jason. I can say Ryuk because I've watched Death Note, so mm-hmm. I'm good with that. I like Death Note, but I, I just say Ryuk. Ryuk. Or Ryuk. Yeah. I could be saying that wrong, too. I mean, I, I certainly... It's Ryuk. I thought it was Re-Evil. Oh, Re- oh Re-Evil? I, yeah, yeah, this is Re-Evil. Or R-Evil? Yeah. R, I, I call it R-Evil. Do you know, because I don't... I don't know. I don't always talk as much as I read, so that also causes a lot of confusion. I have a, a different pronunciation for things in my head. Trust me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyways, D-Day is coming for Microsoft will stop supporting Windows 7. Yes, that means yes. we at least have how many more years I of content? Bu- I call bullshit. That they're going to stop it? I call bullshit. <sighs> Pretty Bro, much no, everything that runs Windows 7... Stuff. They're There's still two. supporting XP shit. The, ah, but they're... They, they're enterprise they license. Are? Yes. Enterprise they license. Are. Certain enterprise the licenses. enterprise version? Certain ones, like in medical applications. But those licenses... Can't upgrade. So there was a good article I read them. on this. Apparently that, that rule, because of the problem they're having supporting it, when they started selling Windows 7, because that's so many years they after... It. They stopped That license... They saw it. Yeah. yeah. They seen okay. the problem. I, fi- I didn't know if it was going to be Windows 7 uh-huh. or 10 that that problem would be... Did you yeah. know they're selling the hook to... Re- I think they're still supporting some... Now, I know they're XP, but there's some... There was like some controversy that uh, Microsoft said basically they started removing that wording from the license agreements so that you could buy extended support, so it doesn't exist. XP, the, XP, I know has it for sure yes, because it does because of I run into it on engagements and it's been fully patched XP and I'm like, fully patched XP. Yep. Yes, bro, they have fully patched fact, XP. It's they got easy. shit that like XP is updating right now. It's yeah, Tuesday. and it's actually an easy hack. Mm. Um, the ones that do it is Windows XP embedded. Embedded, so you, yes. there it is. And by the way, you like can, medical devices. Okay. Sh- yeah, you can switch XP to be embedded. You change the tag and it starts pulling updates. They haven't blocked that, from my understanding. There you go. So there's a lot of people on, in some Reddit forums discussing it that you can just flip the switch in a registry ATMs to the embedded. XP, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's and how ATMs are protected. Yep. Yeah. A lot of yeah, yeah, XP yeah, 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 I know that. Yeah. And that's why they lasted so long. Um, a couple – well, the side notes about that is when you go for FDA, FDA approval and they want to approve a piece of software, and specifically we'll talk about like the uh, resonant image machines, the um, – What's a big scanner they stick in? Oh, you're talking about like when you're driving by and the, the license plate reader? No, 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 no. When the, the scanner, the CAT scan system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, scan, yeah. yeah. The CAT scan and medi- medi- medical, medical uh, imaging systems. Yeah. When they MRIs. certify MRI. Mm-hmm. When they certify an MRI machine, my friend was explaining this to the hospital. Uh, when they certify an MRI machine, they don't just certify that that machine won't kill you when they stick it in there from whatever <laughs> other reasons. But they certify the software. It's a whole kit process. If they were to change the operating system, even though the software runs on Windows 7, hmm. they would have to get Windows 7 certified as well. Windows XP is already certified with the FDA. So, so they 
don't touch it. And they said, those are technically offline. They send one file through a pinhole firewall on a special managed mm -hmm. network. They just drop the image file over here to where the regular computer network can grab it, and nothing goes back. So and it is up to date because it's embedded and it hope. has a support contract. Right. Hope. But <laughs> then when I get in there, I fucking flood it and then I kill the guy that's in there. And that's yeah. the reason why <laughs> that's the reason why it's always a hope, because no one ever gets to test it. Because they're afraid as fuck. Like, yo, right. don't even a, test this floor. I put a this floor is on a separate subnet. <laughs> right. Well, and when I that's why when I did that project of those transparent firewalls for that company with PF Sense, that's what they were doing is setting them in front of SCADA devices so they could monitor, watch, and pinhole the access mm. between the devices and that. That way, even though they have a firewall that creates a separate subnet that does have its own rules, they wanted a second set of rules. So if anyone ever managed the managed firewall to unmanaged firewalls that were basically like locked so down. So they have a pinhole double net, they du Yeah. Well, they did a transparency. They didn't have the double net. Oh, okay. Because so, sure. you can apply rules to the TCP streams without a net rule. That's uh, pretty cool, it's, actually. It's a feature like PFSense that. has. So, like that. yeah. It's... It's a company that cares deeply about security, so it's definitely something to think about. But yes, the D Day is coming, is what this article is about. Before we went on an entire rant, but it's still related uh, towards their hardening this. Um, but mm -hmm. honestly, we're I'm calling bullshit. Oh, uh, trust me, there's going to be years of Windows 7 systems getting popped. We got plenty of articles coming up over the next three years. I can predict that. I'm not even making 2020 predictions. I'm making like 2023 predictions. There's Windows 7 box that ran this industrial controller that no one replaced. <laughs> That'll be one story in 2023. Oh, for sure. Episode whatever of how they got hacked, episode 300. All right, so this industrial controller, before it melted down and killed a thousand people, this Windows 7 box with a vulnerability that no one could patch because there's no updates for it. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that will be that story. Uh, <laughs> this is the last one here. Let me see what. Uh... Yeah, it, well, it's more medical devices. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Oh no, that was that was just a double. A that double was, of yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this one right before, or the one uh, no self posted about the uh, oh, hundred thousand phishing attempts that teach you how not to click these emails. We keep warning you guys about. Life Labs? Nope. Nope. Oh, one before that. Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of articles in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not a hard finding articles. It's which articles are we gonna cover? Right. It's a vice article, right? The vice one. It's, it's in the uh in Keybase. Yep, all right, found it. There we go. Yes. Researchers release dead on hundred thousand phishing attempts to teach you how not to get hacked. God, that's good. This is something that companies should utilize to train their employees. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I like this. Oh, man. I packaged up 25 gig of mm -hmm. HTML screenshots from the most, re most recent 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know what scale this is going on at, right. just the most recent 100,000 I happen to have on me here. Wow. I aggregate from various feeds in case you find it useful for education materials. <laughs> That's great. Because switching is such a dominant threat to the target groups I normally work with. I've been working over the last three years on a number of tools and services to mitigate the respondent attacks. Uh, wow. Yeah, this is a lot. It's a good data set for uh, building AI to go out and uh, figure out which sites are legitimate and non-legitimate indiscriminately by just scanning every public host on the Internet, doing a mass scan, and being able to look at a fingerprint, signature, etc., figure out, okay, how many fake PayPal pages out there, and then from that, put them in the pool and figure out what the intent of these fake pages are and, and how they relate to a particular campaign. It's um, it's interesting because um, it's kind of like we talked about uh, at the very beginning. Everyone gets so hung up and so much press on, uh, on an Intel voltage vulnerability that requires root-level access to do, mm -hmm. but the reality is this is just the last 100,000 phishing emails they have because this is how the actual attacks. Every, how many incident responses started with a phishing email? And you're probably thinking more than half. The last 100,000? Either, yeah, except for the ones that where someone left something swinging in the breeze wide open. If that wasn't the case, it was a phishing email. Those are the two attack vectors that you primarily see. Mm -hmm. Oops, I left a port open with a default password or something like that, some misconfigured device. Mm -hmm. Second is they fished because they couldn't find the default password on device. Those are the two primary 2019 and flowing default right into 2819 eight, attack if vectors. If that doesn't work, start fishing. Start fishing. And that's what you're doing. If, it, if the if fish doesn't just jump in your boat, you got to actually put the pole out there, send a phishing email. <laughs> 
Sometimes a boat, it just jumps in the boat, man. It's just like, hold on. I just ran into an elastic database that has all the data I was looking for. I'm like shipwrecked on this thing. That's also that's... like uh, Facebook <laughs> is. I feel like Facebook is just a boat and all the fish just jump in. They just jump they in. Have. Yeah. Uh, China Citizens Watch, the official Chinese vision of the Japanese giant citizen uh, Volvo Watch Company. Ooh, a citizen's brand. Yes. Ch- Interesting. I know it's a lot of citizens and Bulova fans out there. Mm-hmm. 150 terabytes of mm-hmm. your data. Do I have that much yes. data on people? Yes. I mean, that many people, I mean, that's... That's a big, yeah. I guess yeah. you're right. It makes sense. Their watch giant. I like this. Attribution was fairly easy. Cursor reports that some files revealed upon <laughs> <laughs> that uh, oh, this is like, was likely the owner of the data. That's just funny when you run into data, you know, who owns this? You're like, someone owns all this data. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. What a mess. Passwords. Citizens, passwords. Yeah, why bother putting passwords in a... Uh, yeah, who? <laughs> TikTok, why, why, why didn't it respond? <laughs> That's such a good double play in words, TikTok, because China owns TikTok, TikTok, watch. Ha, 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 ha. I like yeah. that. <laughs> The data was covered November 22nd, 2018. Contact to China Citizen Watch first made a Chinese email address. Within 48 hours, Citizen did not respond to the notification. That happens a lot. It ain't our data, is it? <laughs> and it's like, yes, I'm showing it to you. They're like, uh. Oh, man. Wait, how much discussion it takes to go, no, this is your data. All of it. These are passwords. Why is all this data exposed, guys? I don't know. 150 terabytes. That's, 150. A, lot. That's, That's a, a lot of data, man. Uh, but if a big, yeah, if a big, uh, I, you know, I, there might be a, uh, a too big problem because they said, but if a big company like uh, China's w- Citizens Watch can't get a data incident response rate, does it acknowledge notification, doesn't uh, follow up properly, well, does it mean for other smaller entities? I don't know. I think there are companies that get it right. We just don't hear about them in the news because they're getting it right. Exactly. So mm-hmm. uh, that's one piece of data. There are small incidents, minor incidents, and potential security breaches that happen a lot that are gotten right that we don't hear about it. And there's actually, for the amount of companies there are on the planet, I mean, as much as there is a plethora of news, there's still plenty of cities in the U.S. that don't seem to be in the news. Like, there's some mm-hmm. running proper security. Yep. There's some doing things right. But, you know, um, we haven't, knock on wood, had any data breaches in the city of Taylor. We do have seven indictments on our current mayor, but we haven't had a data breach. <laughs> we had a few indictments on our previous mayor, too. So they, um, there's at least one commonality, but they, they got the data locked down, I guess. Matter of fact, I remember I've dealt with the IT people in, the, in my local city. They were mostly a pain because they don't like to open any ports, which is love hate they were overly difficult to deal with but they were, at least they didn't have anything open um when i was trying to do some work uh connecting some things for them so um they they right down to the port you can't even plug into their switches at the time this is a couple of years ago i dealt with them they disable all the ports starting use so wow. even though i was in a city building i couldn't just plug into port 12 even though it's open the it's off until turned on uh one schools you the same way that's why <laughs> actually kind of how they how they uh screwed up a big project at the school we had them enable a bunch of ports and if you're familiar with how cisco works you have a running config and then you save the running config to be that so they made some changes for us and then there's a big power outage in that storm all the changes seem to have reverted mm-hmm. <laughs> Ouch. someone forgot to save the running config we told them that they're like we don't really have notes on all the ports we change like ah we do so we'll, we'll really tell you all the i think it's 37 cameras have to be reset up now all the 37 ports that power cameras that they set up. Well, the same thing. They're doing the same thing. It's implicit no until it says yes. So you can't uh, just plug into something, which is good. That's not a bad way to set things up. Network access control NAC. That's what you're talking about there. High levels of lock it down, only add if needed. And I think that's the end of the list I have. Did I yeah, miss anything, that guys? It. That was it. It's a good show. I mean, besides that, I mean, just more of the same. More companies getting hacked. Yeah. More hospitals getting hacked. More schools getting hacked. It's been 72 school districts that have been hacked Ooh. in 2019. 72. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind, people. Yeah. Secure those systems. Update. 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 It's never enough times in. Uh, have you caught it? So I waited on Mr. Robot. Um, I, I have them all ready. 
and queued up because uh, tomorrow or Sunday? Is Sunday the last episode, the final? When's the season finale? Someone tell me. I'm not sure. I don't know either. What I do is I'll wait till the season finale. I'm a binge watcher. I love. Yeah, I like to binge. Consecutively watch watching something. I don't want to wait a week. Yeah. I went. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Expanse, and I finished it in two days. The latest season that came out, I think that would have been ten episodes, so ten hours of TV watching. <laughs> you guys hear about uh, Cox? Cox Cable? Yeah. What, what did they happen? They, uh, they lost. They um. They lost their court case oh yeah billion dollars to the record labels for harboring people like mo <laughs> it's only a matter of time mm. <clears throat> Hold on, what billion we dollar judgment what billion dollar judgment bro and, and you know uh there's gonna be more and more of that come down he's gonna put up on the screen what yeah happened? The major music labels have scored a major victory Thursday in their copyright infringement suit against Cox Communication when a Virginia jury ruled that the cable giant to the tune of $1 billion. EMI, Warner Music Group, Universal Cox last year, alleging piracy, a mass piracy of 1,000 plus songs by the company's subscribers. So oh. EMI, Warner Music Group, Sony, and Universal Music They'll appeal sued this. Cox. But, so what, were people hosting these illegal files on Cox yes. servers? Yes, yes. Oh, that's different then. And going well, to actually go and use Cox infrastructure to go and download it and, and circumvent, you know, legal media. Like, the same thing that people do on Comcast and AT&T and all that shit. So it's going to start rolling. Shit's going to start rolling downhill. Because once the ISP is getting hit, there's no more, oh, we're going to go raid your mom's house and lock you up for two or three years for piracy. Oh, no, no. You know what we'll do? We'll just sue this one company, the ISP upstream for you, who should be monitoring you and making sure that you're not downloading blobs from known bad guys. Right. Uh, Safe harboring, man. That's yeah. a big deal. It's, it's not interesting. logging and all that type of shit. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't log, it's a big deal. When you turn a blind eye and go, yeah, as long as you pay me uh, $90 for that uncapped, <laughs> non-bandwidth internet, you know? That's probably, they don't have the court. I'd actually uh, like to read through the court filing on this to get a better understanding because there's something I'm missing here in this headline that, Normally, carriers, it's the same way that if you if you do something atrocious, but you use your phone to do it, to call and harass someone, the phone company is not liable because the phone company is under safe harbor. They're, they're going to basically say, uh, we're not liable for what transports over our lines. Mm -hmm. I mean, but something... you got you got the uh, the Communications Decency Act. Right. Which says that, uh, you know, you are responsible as an ISP for any communications on your network and the, and the contents of them to a certain extent. Right. So we have to figure out where they drew that line. There's yeah. somewhere that they screwed Some up. Some fucking lawyer just got paid fat. Yeah. And just got to bust down Audemars with the, with yeah. the, with the, you know, he got that one. He walked into the jeweler like, I'm good. I mean, listen, Pedro, I'm going to call you on Monday. Don't even trip. Let's check clear. Yeah. But I want that today. Yeah. So uh, interesting, but yeah. That's yeah, man, I'm saying if you want to do touring, go get a cheap BPS. E Done. Or run a VPN, run it, something like that. There's ways to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yep, yep, yep. Don't uh, do not do it with your raw IP address. You're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. So, with that being said, don't none of you have a bad time. And also, this is how VPNs will get de facto banned by ISPs. This uh, is the first step to that. It's a Well, it is, but it probably they probably encourage VPN. Because you know, what they really want is the money. Mm -hmm. And they, what they probably did was turn a blind eye to collect, like Dave, Xavier said, those data caps. Cool, this guy wants to go over his data cap. Awesome. Right. He it's wants to pay for it. Exactly. He's paying for the terabytes. I, I don't get him to pay for terabytes. Now, if they VPN it, they can say, look, it's encrypted with a VPN. What am I supposed to do? And uh, at that point, they can... They'll not, they're going to let you use VPN because all they care about is the money. As a matter of fact, you just made it easier. We can't see any VPN. It's encrypted. I don't know if I'm safe harboring or not. The guy uses a VPN. I am invisible. So that's a, that's a reason to do it. Mm -hmm. Say Nord has a deal going on. Didn't Nord get hacked? <laughs> yeah. It was messy, but it wasn't. Didn't Nord get hacked? <laughs> it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be, but everyone liked to pick on Nord because Nord spent a fortune and had a bunch of shitty advertising. So there's a good reason. There's plenty of other reasons you can pick on Nord. 
Anyways. Yep, that's it for me, though. That's it. We gave you guys over an hour and a half. Or, excuse me, over an hour. Yeah. And we don't feel that. No. I'll drop all these notes in here. Um, Mo, someone asked if you have some stats that yeah, you could share. I just dropped it. I dropped it twice. Oh, kick ass. Did it? Let me see if it showed up. Did it? No. Drop it in the um, key base, and I'll put it in the show notes. Alrighty. It didn't show up. Sometimes uh, YouTube filters out. If you're not the admin, they'll filter that shit out. Oh, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. You can see it, but it doesn't tell you that it's oh, not being posted. They, oh, mm -hmm. They okay. can't. Yep. Mm. All right, now I'm going to see if I can drop it because I'm the admin. <laughs> yeah, I can drop it because I'm the admin. That's right. It's all going to show notes anyways. Okay, yeah. So that way someone doesn't have to wait for this. They'll find those stats in there. And I'm editing the show notes live because <laughs> once I close this, I forget to do it. So I have to do it now. <laughs> it won't get done. <laughs> there we go. Save. All, all right. right. Well, cool. Another great episode. Had fun. Uh, see you guys all next week. We, are we season? doing this next Friday? Should be. Okay. Yeah. I make sure I just... I don't, I'm good. What, what's the date for next Friday? The 25th. No, 27th. 27th. 27th? Two days after the Xmas. Yep. It makes sense. Seven days that'll, from now is the 20th. That'll be... Payday. That'll be the last time you guys <laughs> see me for a couple episodes. Then yeah. I'll return. Really? You go take some time. He's got to get some set up. I mean, I got to get set up, and then I got to go get, you know. His situation all over. I've been seeing people live stream from fucking caves, bro. Like, you're okay, good. I mean, if you don't know. <laughs> if you want me to live stream. Fuck, man. If you want me to live stream. You can barely laptop, hear what the fucking guy's saying. You're trying to fucking translate it. You're like, what happened? Okay. I was going to assume it's death to America. <laughs> no weeks, <we> saw. <laughs> So, oh, there's the head. Oh, oh fuck. He's just going to put like a box right here and say it's Mo. Just green screen it. Just green screen it, Mo. And just paste me in. I mean, we can... We, we can do a screen overlay. We figure we're, something. We're, we're advanced here. Yeah, we'll work it out. We've done a remote. But I'll be here. We've um, done a remote definitely. Phone And phones work good for remote for Zoom. I've actually... I've got one or two interviews I've done where people just load Zoom on their phone. Mm -hmm. it, your phone's got a good mic on it. All right. Put a couple candles in front of you, you know, get a little ambient. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to be in that player ass, high rise. I'm about to see. I need that background action. Yes. All right. Living over there in a different world, out of the Detroit city. Yes. And this has been How They Got Hacked. Yep. All right. All right. See you next week.